Today we will discuss the second part of the story, Planning a Surprise uh, of Class 8 English Fairy Book. Uh, it is a abridged version of a small excerpt from Louisa May, May Alcott's famous novel, Little Women. So in the first part we got introduced to the characters, uh, that is the four sisters. Uh, I hope you remember their names. It's Margaret. Joe, Beth or Elizabeth and the younger one is Amy. So uh, in the beginning in the opening scene we see them uh, sitting comfortably in their living rooms and uh, waiting for their mother. A brief description of each of them have been given in the opening part which we have already discussed. So uh, while they wait for their mother uh, they uh, start planning that uh, their mother needs a new pair of slippers and uh, the elder one Margaret proposes to give her that for Christmas uh, but uh, uh, Meg says said that no I'm uh, actually Beth proposed it Meg said that she, she should give it for Christmas uh, so now there is, uh, I mean, uh, they wanted to grab her attention by uh, each giving her a present. So they plan that each of them should give her a separate present. Okay, so uh, finally Meg says, okay, fine, I will give a glove. I'll give her a pair of gloves. And uh, then Joe said that she would uh, give, them, uh, give her mommy a pair of army shoes okay she thought that uh, army shoes uh, army shoes are generally they're very insulated and they're good for winter and since uh, mrs march has to uh, had to go out uh, for doing some errands so it's better that she had comfortable shoes so joe proposed to give shoes uh, beth thought she would give some handkerchiefs with uh, nicely hemmed ones and Amy said that she would settle for cologne she'll give uh, gift her mommy a bottle of cologne and uh, which she could manage from her pocket money and uh, which would also save her some money to buy her pencils from, so from this we know that uh, Amy is a very small girl she's still uh, starting uh, to write her letters that means she's she's still uh, working on with pencils so uh, and then they decide how to give the presents so they decide that uh, they will pack them and put them in a on the table and uh, they will watch while their mommy opens them and sees what is inside them exactly like they used to do for their birthdays so uh, it's a ritual they used to follow every year for everyone's birthday like the person whose birthday it is would sit at the table and others would march in uh, give their present and kiss the uh, birthday girl and uh, proceed and then they will all sit back and watch her open the presents so that was a very fascinating uh, exercise they do however uh, Beth does not like it at all. She doesn't like everyone watching her when she opened the presents. Uh, so they also plan uh, to g give their mo mother a surprise by pretending that they're buying the things for themselves, but actually, uh, but uh, they were meant for her. But they will pretend that they were, they are not f meant for her. So they will surprise her at the last moment. So uh, then Joe proposes that they better start. Uh, rehearsing for the drama they had planned for Christmas. Now Joe is uh, the playwright of their house. So she writes dramas which they enact on Christmas. And uh, she, uh, Margaret, the eldest one, was uh, best in dressing up. She loved dressing up and being the heroine of the drama. And But uh, and right now she says that, uh, well, I'm too old for those things. I must give up. But then everyone agreed that no, you cannot give up because you are most excited uh, about dressing up. She likes wearing long gowns and white gowns and 
opening her hair and wearing gold paper jewelry so all these kiddish childish stuffs she like likes very much okay so then joe said you are our main actress if you lose if you quit then we will we will never be able to have a drama so we must start rehearsing so she tries to enact a scene from uh, the drama and which which was her favorite part she takes out the toasting fork from uh, beth's hand which still had their mother's slippers on it and pretends it to be a dagger and it was so funny that everyone bursts out laughing so you can see a very uh, warm and cozy family scene is being presented in the uh, excerpt so uh, when the children are so happy and uh, uh, they are enjoying themselves their mother enters the scene and she is glad to see that the children are very happy and uh, there is a brief description of mrs march's uh, appearance uh, she was not very elegantly de dressed they, of course they uh, as we can see from the decor of their house they are not very rich they are not very well to do so she was not elegantly dressed but she was she had a noble look about her she was tall and uh, she was very motherly to look at that means she had a very kind look about her uh, uh, the gray, she was wearing a gray cloak which was rather uh, old and the bonnet she was wearing was quite unfashionable bonnet is a headgear uh, which used to be worn by english ladies in yester years but uh, they thought that no matter how she is dressed, she is the most splendid woman in the world. So their mother addresses them affectionately and uh, she tells them that there is so much to do uh, because they are preparing some boxes uh, to get ready to be sent to their father. Uh, so she, didn't, she couldn't come for dinner. So she asks Beth and Meg whether anyone uh, asked for her, anyone came looking for her. And then she calls them all uh, to come to her and give her a kiss. She made uh, these inquiries. Uh, wh while she was making these inquiries, the, uh, her daughters were uh, working hard to make her feel comfortable. Uh, so she got her warm slippers, she sat down on the easy chair. And Amy, the younger one, youngest one, came near her because she loved to be near her mommy. So, and the uh, rest of the girls, they went about the room, uh, making all the arrangements for the tea, and making Miss Mrs. March feel very comfortable. Hmm. Beth, the busiest of all, was going to and f uh, fro the kitchen par kitchen and the parlor, to make arrangements for the tea. Whereas Amy, she's being the smallest one, she doesn't uh, do much. She just kept near her mother. So uh, amidst all these preparations, Mrs. March announces that she has got an, uh, a surprise for them, uh, which she will in, uh, disclose after supper. Now the girls start taking their guesses at uh, what, is the what the surprise may be. Uh, so, Jo was the first to guess it correctly. She said, it must be a letter from their father. These girls are missing their father a lot. Their father is quite a, an aged uh, gentleman who has been sent to the army to serve the army for a particular term. And they are worried about him. And uh, they are eager to know his tidings. That's any news from them, from him. So their mommy says, yes, she's got a letter from their father and it's a very long one. And uh, she assures them that he's doing fine and though it's very cold, but it is still comfortable. And he sends his wishes for Christmas and a special message for each of the girls. Uh, each of the girls. Mrs. March uh, said, patting her pocket, uh, as if she has got a treasure inside. So uh, the letter from their father is nothing less of a uh, less than a treasure for them. They missed him so badly. Mm. So.
so then jo uh, the girls uh, start expressing how much they miss their father jo said that i wish i could be a drummer so that i could go with the army and uh, help my father hmm. but then amy pointed out that it must be quite dis- uh, quite uncomfortable in the army camp you have to sil- sleep in a tent and eat all sorts of bad tasting things out of a uh, drink out of tin mugs beth inquired whether their father is expected very soon mm. but their mother said that uh, Uh, it is unlikely that he will come very soon but the army might send him back if he is sick unless he is very sick he will they will not send so uh, they all drew near the fire uh, uh, their mother sat on the big ch- in the big chair with beth at her feet meg and emmy perched on either arm of the chair jo leaning back Jo uh, st- stood at the back of the chair because she was the most emotional one and she felt like crying when she heard uh, words from her father so she thought it's better to stand at the back and hide her tears there so it's a very lovely cozy family scene that we are encountering here so their mother starts uh, reading the letter uh, the letter it contains the descriptions of the army camp and uh, but their father gave a cheerful description of the camp that the life was pretty lively at the army uh, with the marches and military news and he also expressed how much he misses his daughters he uh, gives sends them his love and uh, then he tells gives them a very important message saying that uh, that he prays for them every day and night and he feels very uh, comfortable when he f- thinks how much they love him so uh, they have to wait a year before they could see him again but he reminded them that while uh, they waited they must uh, put their best in the work they are doing and they should not waste a single moment and Uh, they should remember that he loves them dearly and uh, he te- he also urges them to do their duties faithfully and fight their enemies bravely and conquer themselves so beautifully that when he came back he should be proud of them so everyone became emotional after hearing this and uh, they tried to he- uh, hide their Uh, i mean tears so that uh, uh, but but they were pretty emotional after reading their father's letter so each one of them takes a vow to behave themselves properly so meg said that i would not uh, worry about my looks anymore i would do something very useful hmm. and uh, jo uh, avows that i would try to live up to his uh, expectations Uh, he loves to call me a little woman so i would like to prove myself worthy of that and she will uh, work harder that's what she promised beth couldn't so beth was so overwhelmed she couldn't say anything however she wiped her tears and started working at the knitting she was doing that at that time so she resolved that she would complete all her work and Uh, do her duties uh, diligently so at 9 they stopped all their work and they they had a, a family ritual of singing at 9 so they all sat at the piano and uh, they sang uh, and beth was the best uh, at playing the piano so she played it uh, beautifully and the girls sang the piano was old but the song came out beautifully uh, so meg has a voice of flute so meg uh, sang the best and their uh, mother led the little choir so the their mother led the little music group and they uh, produced beautiful melody uh, amy chirped like a cricket amy was small so she uh, sang yet she sang beautifully 
and uh, Jo wandered through the airs of her own sweet will. So Jo had a mind of her own and she sang the way she is. So, but their mother was the best of them. She sang uh, very uh, melodiously. And she's, uh, we can see the story ends with the description of how dutiful she is. She was the first voice you heard uh, in the house in the morning and the last at night. Uh, so that's that, that's how the story ends with a beautiful, uh, pleasant family scene with the family singing before going to bed. So that is mostly the description of the story. Uh, please read it twice to understand it better. Then we shall discuss the questions and answers.